In this video, we are going to review the Hisense U8QF LED LCD TV, featuring full array local dimming, quantum dot colors, a peak brightness above 1000 nits, as well as multi HDR support, including for both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision, all for less than 1000 pounds. Is it too good to be true? Let's find out. Hello everyone, Vincent Teo from HDTV Test here, and this is the Hisense U8QF ULED TV. Now, ULED is not a new display technology, just a marketing term conjured up by Hisense to describe the company's take on LED LCD technology. Our review sample is the 55-inch version, model number 55U8QF-TUK, which retails at £800, but it has also a larger 65-inch model priced just under £1,000. Before I proceed to talk about picture quality, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Crampton Moore for sponsoring this video. I work closely with the guys there for the annual TV shootout event, and I find the staff's knowledge of the products they sell to be excellent. They will give you unbiased, independent advice for your purchase. So if you are considering getting a new television, even if it's not the Hisense U8QF LED LCD TV, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0113 Mention HDTV test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Right, the Hisense U8QF uses a VA type LCD panel without viewing angle compensation film, so you will get deep blacks by LED LCD standards, but narrower viewing angles. With peak white set to 120 candelas per square meter on this 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern, native black level measured an impressive 0.022 candelas per square meter with local dimming disabled deepening to 0.015 candelas per square meter with local dimming engaged. Using our own custom ordered test pattern containing a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background, we counted 11 vertical columns and 12 horizontal rows, giving us a total of 132 independently dimmable zones, easily the highest number of local dimming zones at this screen size and price point among FLD LED LCD TVs. The local dimming algorithm on the U8QF has improved compared with previous Hisense FALD LED LCDs we have tested, falling somewhere between Samsung's and Sony's respective local dimming philosophies. Partly due to its higher number of local dimming zones, the Hisense U8QF exhibited less blooming than the Sony XH90 and XH95, but a bit more blooming than the Samsung QLEDs which are willing to darken bright highlights and crush shadow detail to keep blacks deep and minimize halation. As you can see from the darkening along the circumference of this rapidly expanding white circle, the Hisense 55U8QF was also dimming highlights to suppress blooming, just not as aggressively as Samsung's algorithm. There's some luminous instability in this challenging clip from Gravity where Sandra Bullock is tumbling through space and some lingering afterglow surrounding the subtitles in this campfire scene from The Revenant. Overall, the local dimming algorithm wasn't as refined as Sony's which remains best in class, but it's compensated somewhat by the U8QF's relatively high number of zones. Color accuracy was decent after calibration, with average data errors around 2, and a few inaccuracies exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3. Nevertheless, most viewers probably wouldn't notice these errors outside a side-by-side -side comparison against a reference display, with colors including skin tones still looking largely natural. However, because the white balance settings are shared between the Cinema Night and HDR Night picture modes, owners may have to repurpose the day and night picture presets for separate SDR and HDR calibration. Motion performance was subpar on the Hisense U8QF LED LCD. Let's start with 24Hz content. With ultra smooth motion disabled, there would be noticeable telescenic judder which is not a problem, since setting ultra smooth motion to film would apply some sort of pull down to smooth out the judder. But from time to time, there would still be minor tearing or stuttering artifacts, especially during scene change. For example, in this sequence from the movie Pan, as the ship travels through the clouds, which will prove distracting to video enthusiasts with a keen eye. For 50Hz material, for instance broadcast TV in the UK and other European countries, 
there's visible frame skipping in video-based content with ultra-smooth motion left at film or switched off, which could only be eradicated by setting ultra-smooth motion to clear or custom, applying motion-compensated frame interpolation with all the resulting artifacts that ensued. There's some black smearing and trailing from the VA LCD panel on this horizontally scrolling test pattern, with motion resolution more than doubling from the sample hole baseline of 300 lines to 650 lines once ultra smooth motion was enabled. To achieve 1080 lines of motion resolution, you would have to engage clear motion which activates black frame insertion or BFI with the known side effects of brightness drop and perceptible flicker especially in bright scenes. Video processing was below average. Upscaling of standard definition content appeared soft with some junk pixels on this SMPDE RP133 test card in 576i. There's also persistent line Twitter, possibly caused by the always on film mode interlacing with no way of disabling it from the user menu, so you should always send a progressive video signal to the television for the best results. The Hisense U8QF correctly detected and processed 3.2 and 2.2 cadences with interlaced film-based material, and engaging game mode would restore full chroma bandwidth on this 1080p test pattern from the Spears and Munsell HD benchmark disc. One video processing shenanigan on the Hisense U8QF that's easily missed by many is the forced noise reduction with non-4K content, leading to loss of fine detail, not to mention motion smearing. This forced noise reduction can be defeated by engaging game mode where presumably all background processing are turned off, but then you would have to put up with telescenic judder since the motion settings are locked out. A better workaround would be to always upscale your non-4K content to 4K resolution first before sending it to the Hisense U8QF. The forced noise reduction disappeared once we fed ultra-high definition or UHD material to the TV. Of course, there would be occasions where these workarounds are not available. For example, when watching broadcast television from the internal TV tuner, which is capped at 1080 resolution, and doesn't allow for game mode to be enabled. Even with game mode engaged from an external HDMI source, the Hisense U8QF did not handle bit-starved content well at all doing almost nothing to suppress macro-blocking and posterization artifacts. Screen uniformity on our 55U8QF review unit was the cleanest we've seen from a Hisense LED LCD television yet, with minimal dirty screen effect and bending, although there were some minor gamma and color shifts along both sides of the screen due to the vanilla VA LCD panel without viewing angle compensation film. For HDR, Peak brightness measured more than 1200 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 610 nits full fill. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage measured 97% UV, while Rect2020 coverage was 74%, powered by quantum dot technology as evidenced by the spectral power distribution captured using our Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer. Thanks to the high color volume that's not restricted by ABL, Bright HDR scenes looked remarkably impactful, but because Hisense has designed the HDR10 tone curve to track brighter than the ST2084 PQ standard from 200 nits onwards, bright specular highlight detail would appear blown out especially in HDR movies mastered to 4000 nits, an issue that's not present in Dolby Vision content owing to the inclusion of dynamic metadata. There's some posterization in the skies of the Martian, betraying the underlying 8-bit plus FRC panel. Near-black gradation in HDR mode was also worse than TVs from A brands, although it must be said that these rival televisions are more expensive. Perhaps due to our professional calibration, we didn't experience any blackouts on our review sample caused by over-aggressive local dimming when watching real-world material. For gaming, Input lag measured a responsive 15 milliseconds in game mode which can be enabled within any picture preset, allowing for accurate color reproduction. Unlike the majority of Samsung QLED TVs, local dimming still worked effectively in game mode with negligible deterioration in picture quality on the Hisense U8QF when we ran our usual Horizon Zero Dawn test. The TV doesn't support the HDMI 2.1 gaming features of ALLM and VRR, 
which will lower its appeal to gamers looking to buy a new television for the upcoming Sony PS5 and Xbox Series X next-gen consoles arriving this year. The 55U8QF accepted 1080p 120Hz video signal, but would throw away half the frames so there's no increase in motion fluidity and clarity from 60Hz. As you can see from our slow motion footage of the Hisense U8QF compared with a Sony TV which reproduced 120Hz in full. Moving on to other aspects not related to picture quality, the U8QF uses Hisense's own Vida smart TV platform which is reasonably responsive, opening the gateway to common streaming apps such as Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube and Rakuten TV, but Disney Plus and Apple TV apps are notably missing. For UK owners, there's Freeview Play on board too, providing access to all the major UK catch-up TV services including BBC iPlayer. The integrated front-firing JBL speakers sounded open and detailed, with reasonably sufficient bass response for run-of-the-mill viewing. We found ourselves taking advantage of the built-in Alex R to listen to Amazon Music in the background while reviewing other TVs in our test room. To sum up, the 55-inch Hisense UAQF is incredibly well-specced for the price. 132 zone full array local dimming, a peak brightness of 1200 nits, quantum dot colors, and multi-HDR support for only £800. But the outcome is the now familiar verdict of great hardware, not so great software. There are significant motion and video processing issues that made us reluctant to recommend it to even casual users. The question is whether the Hisense H9G in the USA is a better TV than the U8QF. The H9G has certainly received better reviews across the pond, but please bear in mind that no one else on YouTube is crazy enough to go into the nitty-gritty of television reviews like we do. We actually pick up local dimming anomalies, motion interpolation artifacts, and backdoor processing by watching real-world content through our experienced eyes. If you would like to watch some of our other technical reviews, click here for the most recent videos, and I will see you in the next one.